Our young men need to be led. We need fathers to stay in the house. Some of the issues that they face um, is not having a close relationship with their dad. Right now, they talk to him every now and then, but they don't have that close bond like boys should have with their fathers. The importance of boys having relations with their fathers is I can't teach them how to be men or certain things that a man can do. So it's very important that boys have relationships with their fathers. Just show them how a man is supposed to act. I got custody of my first son when he was in the second grade. I would go down to Florida and visit because we lived in two different states. Was it a lot of wear and tear traveling back and forth? It was, but that was my son. That was my seed. The case manager called me and, and asked me if um, I wanted, if I would be interested in getting custody of my son. I said, definitely. You know, it's what I've been wanting as my son, you know? Because I was taught by my father to be responsible. And, and so I wanted to be a responsible father. I wanted to do for them what my dad did for me. I needed to surround them with some other black men, role models, um, who could augment and supplement the message that I was giving them. Um, and I met uh, Dr. Lars Roscoe. He had a program called Boys to Men. And um, was just intrigued by the program, intrigued about the group mentality of the program. One particular year, it's maybe five years in, we had about 20 fathers show up, or 20 males show up. And within the third week, they were all gone. So it was these four teachers and all these men, and then all the men left. And they had a lot to do with, you know, they've got responsibilities with work and home and all that. So we got it. But it was only those men that had sons in the program that stayed. How do we get more fathers to be active? Um, I believe we first need to change the whole narrative in America. Uh, because number one, men don't talk. And so all of our men are in these silos, living their own lives. And uh, we need to Secondly, change this narrative of what success means. I chose youth because I believe I have a unique calling in communicating with youth. One of the problems with youth is they act out what they're trying to say verbally. So again, uh, with youth, they're really physically or aggressively acting out what they can't mentally conceptualize enough to verbally say. I, I can't begin to tell you how many young men I see on a daily basis that are basically crying out for attention, crying out for the strong hand of a man to teach them how to be a man. Um, I have a number of uh, mentoring programs that I, that I require kids to participate in as a function of their probation. Um, mentoring does great work. It's, it's, it's the program du jour. It's the one that really, really works most often because it speaks at the core of what the problem is, the missing man. But over and over again, I've seen men understand their responsibility. I help bring this child into the world and I'm gonna do everything I can and make whatever sacrifice I can to make sure that I'm the father I'm supposed to be in my children's life. And not only have I seen that, I've also seen men, black men take in other people's children as, as people did, did me to become that, that male role model in their life to, to say, hey, this kid doesn't have a, 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 a father in his life. I'm gonna make sure he hangs out with me, spends time with me. I'm expose him to what manhood from my perspective is. And I, I've seen that and people go out of their way with that. I think sometime with media, whether it's mainstream media or social media, there's a lot of focus on the negative and people missing it and mess it up and, and whose lives are not lined up with what it ought to be in, in community and in family. And I, I think that some of these, uh, husbands and fathers uh, and 
men who take the responsibility of manhood seriously, especially when it comes to their children, I don't think they get the kind of pub that they need. They don't, nobody wants to sit down and talk to them about that. Uh, but a lot of times we throw all that negative stuff in front of the camera. So. Historically in the United States of America, black has been looked at as negative uh, from in encyclopedias, in dictionaries. And when I was a kid watching the movies, the bad guys would have on the black hats and the good guys would wear the white hats. And so it, it's, you know, from uh, devil's food cake being dark and angel food cake being white. So, you know, from, from the time America started, the images of black has always been negative. And so uh, we, still, we still see that today. I think the biggest issue in the black community that our young men face is hopelessness. A lot of them don't get a chance to get outside their immediate surroundings, their environment, and they don't know that there's a whole nother world outside of where they live. Because I grew up like that. I didn't know that there was something beyond the projects. The last building to the west, the last building to the right, the last building to the north, the last building to the south. That was my world. I never got outside of that. I do a lot of mentoring um, from seventh to high school to college. And in many cases, a lot of young black men don't believe in their own dream until somebody else believes in their dream and can wake them up to the reality that, oh, you can make your dream come true. So I, I don't think it's not that they don't want to, it's just they don't know how. I was a single father for going on uh, right at 10 years. When my daughter was born, uh, I was a college student and uh, we uh, conceived her when I came home from uh, break my sophomore year. And I found out she was pregnant right before I returned to school. I, I knew I didn't want to be a, uh, an absentee father. And I, I was home uh, during the time of my daughter's birth. I came home during that period and I knew I had to come home to be closer to my daughter. I wanted to be a father. My father was uh, not in my life growing up and I wanted to make sure that I was in my daughter's life. And at that point, we made the decision that my daughter would come stay with me. She took my daughter out of school. She actually kidnapped her uh, at five years old. So I didn't see my daughter again until she was six years old. Yeah, it's kind of emotional right there. She had my daughter for a year. She had been dating the father of her second child a while, and I guess he started to see some of the things that I had told him about why we broke up. And so on Christmas Eve, he called me and asked me if I would like to see my daughter. And, uh, sorry. And I told him, absolutely, you know where she's at. So uh, I got to see my daughter on Christmas Eve of her six, six year life. I'll just leave you with this one story. There was a young man and, and this young man is very successful that I know, I mean, financially successful, great career, very well educated. He would drop his son off, and when we would have a performance, his son would be looking for him to see if he's in the crowd, and he wasn't there. And when I had a conversation with him and said, you know what, I know you dropped your son off, I know you've taken care of him and his schooling, he goes to private school, but he's disappointed that his dad wasn't here when these other dads were. Be responsible. Make sure that you are actually in your child's life, not just taking care of them by providing clothing and food. Be in your child's life.